as we know, BC is no stranger to extreme weather from that atmospheric river we've been reporting on that we experienced on the weekend. Two deadly heat domes. You may have also heard phrases like polar vortex and bomb cyclone being used by experts. But why did we start using these phrases and when did we simply start calling it a cold spell, for example? Time to bring in our science and climate specialist, Darius Badavi. Darius, first of all, what are some of the common phrases that we just mentioned? What do they actually mean? Well, since you mentioned it, let's start with uh, atmospheric rivers. Now, I often see people saying we used to just call them a Pineapple Express, uh, but a Pineapple Express is actually a subset of atmospheric river, one that specifically comes from the tropics near Hawaii. Uh, atmospheric rivers are really exactly what they sound like. Uh, narrow, relatively narrow in atmospheric terms, stream of moisture moving through the atmosphere, now, the west coast is often hit hard by them because that moisture hits the mountains and falls out as rain or snow. Now, a bomb cyclone is a similar case. It's defined as a storm whose pressure drops 24 millibars in under 24 hours. Very exciting. Uh, a heat dome is a little bit different since it doesn't really have a formal meteorological definition, but it's generally used to refer to particularly stubborn and stifling summer high-pressure systems that trap heat under them. And lastly, polar vortex. This one is a... Separate case, since it is virtually never used properly in the media, the polar vortexes are actually always present, high up in the stratosphere over both poles, and they only indirectly affect our weather. So if you hear someone say a polar vortex is coming, they generally mean there's Arctic air moving south. Okay. Uh, where do these terms come from, and, and why might it seem like we've, they've sort of entered our vocabulary in the last few years? Right, so the term atmospheric river has existed in meteorological circles since the early 1990s. Bomb cyclone was formally defined in the 80s, although fast developing storms have been called bombs since the 40s. Uh, heat dome first took off in 2011, according to a New York Times investigation, and polar vortex dates back to at least the 1950s, but it entered the public zeitgeist just around 10 years ago. Now, especially here in BC, it feels like most of these terms have really taken hold in just the last few years. I asked Gina Esco, an expert with the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, why that might be. I think that with a, a changing communication landscape, there is more time and opportunity to interact. And with more time means more content. <laughs> and so more content means we have more opportunity to share information that before we were so limited, right, that we stuck with plain language because it, it was more efficient time-wise. And now with more time to converse, we can have deeper conversations about the weather and environment around us. And can I just say, as someone who loves the science side of this job, mm -hmm. I am grateful for that extra time. <laughs> no kidding, we are too. Do these terms actually, do you think, help the public understand the weather and the changes we're experiencing? I put that same question to ESCO, because her team is always working to find better ways to communicate about the weather, especially extreme weather. She says it really comes down to how you're using the term. You want to make sure that you're not uh, using it, for example, as a fear appeal only. Uh, fear appeals don't always work. That is to say that sometimes really communicating that the fear of an event uh, can, can sometimes help per people perceive risk. With that said, a lot of the research shows that it can boomerang. That is to say, instead of it increasing risk, it actually increases worry and concern, and they, they, don't, they don't really know what to do. So if you're just sticking bomb cyclone in a headline to get clicks, that's probably not helpful. But unfortunately, we see that all too often. So I asked ESCO whether the better scientific understanding among some of the public is worth the trade-off. It's complex. I think that where there is misinformation or possible misuse of the term, I think that what can be done is to re reiterate what the term is, what the meaning is, and provide more context. Uh, there will always be other interpretations. Now, as with anything that's poorly understood, these terms are ripe for misinformation, intentional or otherwise. And that's especially important here in BC, where terms like atmospheric river and heat dome are, for good reason, quite charged. But these terms aren't going anywhere. The cat is out of the bag. So the only thing left to do is help people understand what they mean when we use them, the definition of the term, how it relates to the forecast, and what people should do to keep themselves safe. It's important because the language we use is powerful. And Dan, whoever said talking about the weather is boring? Certainly not my colleague, Darius Madavi. Thanks very much. We'll check back in later.